Hello and welcome to Saki Tech. In this C++ tutorial number 10, we will cover conditional structure if and else. I highly recommend that you go and watch my previous tutorials so you can understand this one better. Okay, so let's look at the basic format and syntax of the if structure. Now what you do is you type in if and then you open parentheses and in the parentheses you put a condition. The condition is either true or false. If the condition is true, then this statement here will run. If the condition is false, it's going to skip the statement and the program is going to continue on from where that statement ends. So let's quickly do a real life example. Let's take this off and let's declare an integer value x and let's give x the number 50. Okay, and then go down here, type in if, open the parentheses, in the parentheses you want to put the condition. If x is equal to 50, remember assignment operator and equal to operator is two different things. So if x is equal to 50, this becomes true. So what we're going to do is we want to print x is 50. Okay, and let's put a new line right here. Let's save and compile. I mean, build and run. Okay, so x is 50. Remember then, if you put a condition between parentheses, if the condition, condition is true, then the statement here runs. Now, if you want to put more than one statement, you have to put it between brackets, just like this. Bracket, bracket. Now, how do you know this is one statement? We know this is one statement because we end it with a semicolon. Every statement ends with one semicolon. Now, if I do good job. Let's save and uh, run this thing. Oops. Gotta get, get out of this one. Okay, so build and run. So now you can see if x is 50, we printed x is 50, and then we also printed a compliment saying good job. Now if I didn't have these, um, the brackets here, this statement would have ran outside of, of, of this uh, if structure, okay? It is very advisable to actually include the brackets even if you only have one statement, okay? So you can actually do this. That only keeps the program cleaner. It clarifies that this is the statement that belongs to this if condition and these are the brackets where you have all the statements you want to run if this was true. So let's uh, make this 40 and see what happens. Build and run. Okay. So nothing printed. And the reason nothing printed it was because x is not equal to 40. x was assigned the value 50 up here. So 50 is equal to 40 evaluates to false so this block of statements does not run so that that is how if works okay okay now if you look at the title we're talking about if and else so let's do the else part let's ignore this code here for a second and go down here and let's go if condition then statement okay so if this condition is true run this statement let's say we wanted to specify what would happen if the condition was false so what we can do then is just put an else statement two okay so if it is true run this if this is false 
run this. This is as simple as this uh, seems. It's a very powerful um, structure. Just remember the syntax. If you open the um, the parentheses, you put the condition in. In the next line, you put you can put the statement, end it with a semicolon, and then you, you do an else. Now, if you have multiple statements that need to be executed, whether it is true or false, you get the curly braces again. So you, you do curly brace, and you put statement one if true statement oops statement two if true okay and we're gonna take this one out same with the else if you have more than two statements that you have to run statement one if false statement two if false okay so if, if condition was true both of these guys will run because they're between these curly braces else if the condition was wrong then these two guys will run so let's do a real life example let's add to the program that we already have so if x is equal to 40 you know type in let's do it this way if x is equal to 50 we're gonna print x is 50 else we wanna print and I'm just gonna put these just in case else we're gonna put count x is not equal to 40 okay and then let's put a new line here also let's put in count wrong alrighty so let's uh, run this real quick take that off okay so here it says X is 50 because X is in fact equal to 50 exit this changes to 40 save the file rebuild and run and now it's gonna say X is not equal to 40 wrong so the condition here evaluated to false and because it was false we automatically skipped to else so that is if and else a very simple concept but very powerful when it comes to making decisions now there's also a concept called if else if so that is the next level let's ignore this code for a minute and let's talk about the basic structure of if else if so if condition oops statement one what you can do then is you can go else if another condition statement two else if a third condition statement oops keeps misspelling that one statement three semicolon semicolon else statement whatever this is called the nested if and else structure. Can you can use this to verify a range of values? You have one condition, you have you can have another condition, you can have a third condition, and then you could have if none of those conditions are met, then you can do the final else. Then again, remember you can have a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and infinite number of conditions that you can put in an if and else statement. In fact, some advanced programs probably have that. So let's do a brand new example to make you guys understand how this works. Let's take all this off. Okay. And let's keep that X as 50. So let's say if X is less than 0, 
then we want to say x is a negative value. Alrighty, let's do else if x is larger than 0, we want to print x is a positive value. We'll stop. Keep forgetting the semicolons. That's very important. And then we can do else x is 0. Okay, so let's save this. And let's go over this really quick. So we have x is equal to 50 up here. I'm sorry, x is assigned to 50 up here. So if x is less than 0, what we're going to tell the user is x is a negative value. If x is larger than 0, which is true in this case, we're going to tell the user x is a positive value. If neither one of these statements is true, then x is obviously 0. Okay, so it's larger, larger, less than zero is negative, larger than zero is positive. If none, none of those are true, x is in fact zero. And remember, we can also have the curly braces right here. So let me copy this, paste it right here. Take that off. And then copy this, keep it right here. And then I can also do this. We really didn't have to do the, uh, the curly braces because we only have one statement per condition. If we had multiple statements per condition, the curly braces are a must. But this is just to uh, keep it clear. In fact, just so you know, there is a, there's a good programming practice where uh, they recommend that you use these guys, the braces, even if you only have one statement, just to keep stuff clear. Okay, so let's uh, run this value, this uh, program really quick. Save file, build and run. What it says in the program output is x is a positive value. So it first it looked at this one, this was false. So it went to the next else if. It looked at this condition, this condition was true, so it printed this statement. It ran this statement. After one statement is run in an else if structure, then the program goes to the next line outside of that if and else structure. Okay, uh, let's say this was minus 50. Let's close this, save file, build and run. So in this case, obviously x is a negative value is what prints on the screen because x is less than 0. Now if I do a 0 on x, let's cancel this, save file, build and run, it says x is 0. Because x now was assigned a number 0, if this is false and this is false, the only other possibility is that x is 0. So let's do a quick summary of the syntax. The syntax is very important. You type in if, and between two parentheses, you put the condition that you want to evaluate to true and false. If it's true, you run the statement. And always put the statements between curly braces. Even if it's only one statement, doesn't really, you don't really need the curly braces, like I said but it's a good pra practice, programming practice. So else if, parentheses, another condition, second statement, okay? And when you're done nesting these else and ifs, you can finally just put out an else. And that is, that pretty much means if none of the conditions above me were met, then run this program this final statement right here okay so before we bring this tutorial to an end let's create another program let's make a guessing game let's take a look at how that works so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna declare a variable integer and I'm gonna create 
user guess. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have the user enter in a value. If the value matches a certain number that we specified in our program, we'll tell the, we'll, we'll tell the user, good job, you guessed right. So user guess, let's just assign, initialize this to zero for now. And let's say integer uh, answer. This is something only we know. This is private. Answer is five. Okay, that's what the number a person must guess to get five points. So let's do it this way. C out. Please enter a value between zero and ten. Oops. Then put a little space right here. Condition. And then, then let's uh, read this value from the user. So the, we're going to read that from the user. User guess. Oops. User guess. Okay. So here we're going to use the if structure. If user guess is, is equal to answer. Let me reemphasize this is equal to, not assignment. So if user guess is equal to answer, then we want to print. In fact, let's do curly braces. We want to print C out. You have guessed the right number. Right number five. Okay. And then C out. Good job. Let's put a new line right here, actually. And I'll. And then down here, I'm going to do an else, curly braces, see out, your guess was wrong. Try again. Okay, so that is our little program right there. Let's do a save file. Let's uh, build this program. It says we have one error somewhere here. Okay, I did forget to put the quotations here. Remember, this is a string of text. It has to go between double quotation marks. So that was my error. So file save. Let's do a build and run. Okay, so it's saying please enter a value between 0 and 10. Let's enter 5. So it's saying you have guessed the right number 5. Good job. So it was true because I put in 5 and I was able to get this message here. Now let's uh, do a wrong guess. Build and run. Please enter a value between 0 and 10. Let's put in 4. Now it told me your guess was wrong, try again. Okay, so when this became false, it skipped down to the else here and ran the statement block that was between these two curly braces. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more videos to come regarding C++ and other technology stuff. And uh, click the like button if you like this video. And I'll see you in the next module. Have a good day.